bolus, an anticoagulant, obviously that's what the old people say if you want to write this down so you'll remember it. This is what the folks in town will say, a blood thinner. A blood thinner, y'all, is an anticoagulant. Did most of y'all know that? That a blood thinner is, in scientific terminology or in clinical terminology, a blood thinner is an anticoagulant. All right, now let me show you right here. Anticoagulants, okay. And now I don't know much. They say this antithrombin, a plasma protein produced by it inactivates thrombin. Now, now see, I always forget this one from semester to semester. When I'm teaching, I always forget antithrombin. I remember coumadin. I remember heparin. I remember things like that. But antithrombin is something they say that's produced by the liver. And if it's antithrombin, if it's against thrombin, then fibrinogen can't be converted to fibrin. You follow me? If it's against thrombin, if it's antithrombin, I say, say antithrombin. Now this one right here, heparin. Heparin, you've all heard of heparin. You all heard of heparin? Heparin? And heparin's going to inactivate thrombin. Now look at this. Heparin all right, increases the effectiveness of antithrombin. In other words, if you just remember, look, heparin produced by basophils, heparin inactivates thrombin. Heparin is a blood thinner. You know, heparin is a blood thinner. They're giving, they're giving him some heparin. What's that stuff, heparin? Give him some heparin, okay. Heparin. All right, so uh, now you, it inactivates uh, thrombin. And without thrombin, fibrinogen can't be converted to fibrin and blood won't clot or slow way down. Now, this one right, the next one of these right here, dicumarol or coumadin. I like that one. That one is used a lot. And a lot of doctors hate that. They hate my patients. A lot of, uh, uh, in other fields, they hate All right, dicumarol, coumadin. Now, don't forget this. I will ask you this one. This is so common. If you're taking, if a person's taking coumadin, you say they're taking rat poison. That's what it is. They're taking, you know, if you take, you, when you buy, when you buy a decon, rat poison, for rats, of course, they just eat it. Mmm, it tastes good. They start bleeding internally. And old po folks used to think, well, but they eat decon, they won't smell when they die. Yeah, they smell when they die. The only reason you don't smell them is because they go off somewhere and die. Any animal that dies, <laughs> any animal that dies is going to smell. They just get sick and go off and die. <laughs> All right, right, right here, real quick. Look, look at this. Low vitamin, it, it acts as an antagonist. You sure and bleed on that one? It acts as an antagonist to vitamin K. No importance of vitamin K. Nece vitamin K is necessary for the synthesis of prothrombin and some other things, but definitely remember prothrombin. Okay? Uh, and several other factors. <coughs> prothrombin, fibrinogen, prothrombin. Okay, so remember that. And then uh, citrate's not now. This is something else. If you bind up calcium, blood won't clot. Citrate's and oxalates and so forth. And stuff called EDTA. I'm going to stop. Hold on, call the Hold on just a minute. Before you all leave. All right, EDTA is that. That's just the name of it and so forth. Now, heridin, heridin is in the buccal glands of leeches. Y'all saw that film with Stallone, Stallone? You know, when Sylvester Stallone, if he was in the water and the leeches were... And he, you, you don't even feel them because of an anesthetic. A leech can come up, a leech can come up and latch onto you. They use leeches sometimes in modern medicine to do away with blood clots, like a, a, a thumb, you know, I've heard of a thumb break or something, and to attach a leech to do away with so the blood won't clot. But anyway, here it is. It, in other words, it, mostly, a lot of these things inactivate thrombin. Inactivate thrombin. We'll finish up with that now. Here's what I.